Hey, what's up, my people? Stuff in here today for episode 15 of Spellbound Schoolgirls. And I know I was supposed to have three episodes up yesterday instead of two, including the first ending I choose. But I'm going to explain what happened real quickly. Basically, in the middle of the final episode, I was recording my ending of my girl of choice. Um, the video stopped recording because of storage issues. So, I just decided to finish the chapter so I didn't have to restart the entire story and restart the episode. I'm going to do all three endings today because I did the trick I talked about yesterday where I use one ticket but don't continue on with the story. So, the next chapter is already started, yet it saves the time ticks down to where you can get a second ticket again. Anyway... Let's just jump right into it. And I already missed a line of text. Really tight thing to do. Just as the chant finishes, I leap I leap forward and push Haruna down. Austin? A beam of light shoots over our heads and crashes into a wall. Haruna sees this and understands the situation. We both turn around to see who attacked us. Haruna's face then clouds with confusion. You, what are you doing here? I look at the suspicious man in the doorway, but I don't recognize him. Uh, you know him, Haruna? That's the headmaster, Raymond. What? Raymond grins. Calling a teacher by their first name is disrespectful, Haruna. Is this I's influence? Glaring at him, she stands up. I shift a bit behind her so I'm not in the way. Answer me. Why are you here? The headmaster sighs as if she, as if he's disappointed. Isn't that obvious? I'm here for the treasure. I grip my wand tightly. Things were going so smoothly until you four got ahead of me. He taps his chin with a troubled expression. I don't think you'd, I didn't think you'd make it this far this quickly. Should I praise you? So, you've been watching us this whole time. Why? Keep talking. I have to keep him talking. Haruna hasn't attacked yet. That means this guy's strong or she's waiting for something. That either means this guy's strong or she's waiting for something. Either way, we benefit from a bit more time. For the first time, Raymond looks at me. A small smile spreads across his face. Right. We never did have that meeting. So you don't know. I'm the one that invited you to the school. My thoughts screech to a halt. What? Why? The key. Very good, Haruna. That's right. I needed someone without magic to get, to get the key in the library for me. I didn't think you'd find the basement entrance too. I'm beyond impressed. Cameron, I'm trying to record a video and you need to go to sleep. He, Cameron, stop back talking. One sec, I gotta deal with my brother. Cameron Kane. Sorry about that. Three year old troubles. He mutters a word and flicks his hand toward us. Towards us. In the next moment, Harun and I fall to the floor paralyzed. I struggle to move, but all my joints have locked up. <clears throat> That's enough of your stalling. You're hoping help would come, right? He knew. Beside me, Haruna grimaces. So, what now? You'll kill us? You think awfully highly of yourselves. What makes you think you're worth killing right now? He walks past us and moves towards the center of the room. Rather than you two, she deserves my full attention. He reaches out and caresses the cheek of the sealed woman. Who, who is she? He frowns. It isn't a surprise you don't know. She isn't in any of the history books after all. She is Irene, a rebel in the great magic world all those years ago. That's, that's not possible. The rebels were defeated. I vaguely remembered what I heard I vaguely remember what I heard from Kana about the war 
<clears throat> Some people hated the way magic users were living in secret, so they rebelled. The rest of the magical world fought them to keep the peace. Eventually, the side of peace won after wiping out the rebels. I'm missing a lot of details, but... <clears throat> If she's one of the rebels from that time, it makes sense she's sealed. Raymond laughs as he studies the seal on Irene. Irene was far more powerful than the average witch. They couldn't beat her, so they sealed her away. The former headmaster did it. Curse it, old man. It was a nightmare to avoid getting caught out while working under him. But it was worth it. It was all leading up to this day. He reaches out and a red glow coats the seal. Is he... Is he trying to break the seal? Wait, you can't do this. But Raymond doesn't hear her. His gaze is focused on Irene's face. We'll be together soon, my love. Suddenly, the paralysis leaves my body. It worked. Raymond glances back at us as we stand. A paralysis counter. You're an excellent student, Haruna. Casting a high-level spell like that without chanting is... Haruna doesn't let him finish. Balls of fire swarm around him, around her, and then shoot towards him. How rude. He mutters a chant and swings his free arm. The balls of fire fizzle out as they approach him. I flick my wand. The alarm rings through the room, but I ignore it. Orbs of light fly towards his feet, but he chants and they change direction. Come on, come now, you two. You don't actually think you can beat me, do you? We ignore him and pile on as many spells as we can. I admire your resilience. I really do, but... A shattering sound reaches my ears. My heart sinks. Despair colors hard in his face. With a huge shockwave of energy, the seal breaks and we're thrown to the floor. My vision is blurry and all my joints ache. It takes everything I have to not close my eyes and pass out. Harness condition is still a bit better. But she's still stunned. The hardest condition is a bit better, but she's still stunned. Raymond is the first to fully recover. He's staring at something through the smoke. As the smoke clears, I see Irene standing there, curiously observing her environment. Tears swell up in Raymond's eyes. He jumps up and runs to her like an excited puppy. Irene, it's been so long. I, I missed you. Irene turns to him, and after a moment, Irene turns to him, and after a moment, she smiles. The smile feels like an icicle down my back. She reaches out to cur and caresses Raymond's cheek. Raymond, you've aged well. You've become quite handsome. I, I. Her smile widens. You've done more than I expected, Raymond. N no. I only did what was natural. Then, can I ask you to do one more thing? One more trivial favor? Raymond roughly wipes away his tears and nods firmly. Whatever you need. It's nothing big at all. I just need you to die for me. Huh? She grabs his head. He struggles wildly. Wait, Irene. Please, I... Shh, rest now. And the next instant, his skin turns pale, and his entire body turns to ash. Irene's body glows, and she lets out a sigh of affection. Very good. He did well to become so strong. He made an excellent snack. She then slowly turns to us. She steps over Raymond's ashes as she approaches. Now then... Who are you two? We both managed to get to our feet, but we're in no state to fight. The shockwave's effects still linger. Your, unif your uniforms. Ah, 
Your students here, aren't you? Did you know? That makes us enemies. Austin, I'll create a I'll create an opening with a spell and don't be ridiculous. I can't even run on my own. Save yourself. Irene laughs. Quick thinkers. I like that. Irene lifts her hand. It crackles with an enormous with an ominous red energy. I'll make your deaths just as quick. Something. There has to be something I can do. A split second before she attacks, we hear chanting from outside the room. This is... My. A beam of light shoots through the room and, and hurtles towards Irene. Irene frowns and leaps back, but the beam chases her like a homing missile. With no other option, she's forced to block it. We can hear quick footsteps. Austin, Haruna. I've never been so happy to hear her voice. While Irene deals with Mai's long-ranged attack, Kana approaches us. Her hands glow as she chants a healing spell over the two of us. The heaviness of my limbs disappears, the pain fades. Kana smiles with tears in her eyes. I'm so glad we made it in time. I pick up my wand. How did he find us? Haruna answers instead. It was the alarm, wasn't it? Kana nods. The alarm on your wand echoes really well down here. Standing up, Haruna keeps her eyes on Irene. How long can Mai keep this spell up? Not long. I think she should. The beam begins to lose strength. Fear, ting fear tinges Kana's expression. She shouldn't be reaching her limit now. I doubt we can run from a monster like that. Haruna shakes her head. We'll have to try to beat her. Finally, Mai's beam fades away completely. What a nuisance. It's fine if I retaliate now, right? Haruna acts before Irene can attack. She thrusts her palm out. The ground beneath Irene swells and tries to swallow her. You insolent. She shoots in the air and tries to lunge at Haruna, but don't touch her. Along with her chant, Kana summons a, a wall of wind. The wall slams into Irene and knocks her sideways. From my own wand, balls of fire rain down on her. She swats them aside easily, but they work perfectly as distractions. I hear my chanting again. Rage fills Irene's expression. The same beam from before shoots into the room and chases after Irene. She blocks it with one hand while the other blocks attacks from Haruna and Kana. Irene clicks her tongue. I'll commend you for cornering me this much. I'll retreat for now. Let's call this a draw. A purple magic circle forms under her legs. What is she doing? A teleport spell. I didn't think that was possible without a chant. Let's meet again, little witches. You have potential. I can't wait to devour you all. And then, with a flash, her body disappears. After waiting a few minutes, we're convinced she's gone. Tension leaves our bodies immediately. Connor crumples to the floor and hugs her knees. Haruna sighs with relief. I find myself laughing weakly. My steps into the room looking exhausted. Everyone okay? Not at all. I thought I was going to die. Haruna nods. That was certainly terrifying. Mai, are you okay? You cast two huge spells, didn't you? Mai nods and then sits down next to Haruna. I'm fine, just don't expect me to cast any spells for the next half an hour. Even your endless supply of magic has limits, huh? It was never endless. If anything, that woman's is. At the mention of Irene, the moon grows dark. The gravity of the situation sinks in. A monster like that is loose on the world. She was weakened from just waking up, yet we barely put a scratch on her. 
if she were, if she were to grow stronger, the thought makes me shudder. There's no way we can keep a secret, is there? There's no way we can. There's no way we can keep this a secret, is there? My shakes her head. News that this will spread one way or another. Uh, doesn't that mean the police are going to get involved? My grimaces. Probably. I sigh heavily. At the start of all this, I said I wanted an adventure, but... Things are going to get complicated from now on. As we, uh, as we expected, the next week is utter madness. As news of Irene's awakening spreads, the world takes notice. We go through back-to-back -back interrogations from both normal police and magical police. Even the school gets involved. It's only natural considering the headmaster died. The only reason we're let go after a week is because I, his eyes badgering. I still remember her tearing into the chief investigators from both sides. Huh? You really think my kids did this on purpose? Are you stupid? You think they wanted to be put through this? Who steals a monster like that under a school? Anyway, that's a safety hazard. And now you're putting them through more trauma? Do you idiots want to get sued? Huh? Pale face, the investigators let us go the next day. It also helped that we didn't know much. As I stand outside the dorm, I nod at the memory. I, you're a terrible teacher, but deep in my heart, I appreciate you. I check the time. The meetings start soon. Walking through the deserted school grounds, I feel a weird sense of melancholy. The school's temporarily shut down for obvious reasons. Most people have moved out of the dorms and returned home. I'm, s I'm still wandering around, though. Partly because Maya wants to have a final meeting and partly because... Seems like it got attached. I mutter as I look at the massive library. Being surrounded by magic all this time, it's hard to go back to being normal. I arrive at the familiar committee room and find the three of them already waiting. Mai greets me with a smile. You made it. Without without getting lost even once. Who do you think I am? This place is like my backyard now. I saw you make a wrong turn on the first floor. How? Haruna grins. That was a lie. Did you really take a wrong turn? Well played. It's okay, Austin. I can draw you a map if you want. Your kind of stinks right now, Kana, so I'll have to pass on that. For a moment, things feel like nothing's changed. Maya lets us enjoy this feeling for a bit before putting on a serious expression. Everyone, I'm sorry. Huh? For what? I'm the one who started all this. I brought the treasure. I made us look for it. If it weren't for me, my, that's hardly true. You brought it up, sure, but we could have walked away at any time. She's right. No one forced us to come along, but we did it anyway. There you have it, Mai. I don't think anyone's going to let you take all the credit for this. Ugh, stupid ass hairs. That's the part that sucks about being a male with long hair in the front. It always gets in your mouth for no reason. Plus, I'm the one who got us the key. Aren't I way more to blame than you? Of course, I don't feel one shred of guilt. I made a valid point. They shouldn't have kept someone that dangerous sealed under a fucking school building. I'm just an innocent student. Maya looks at each of us with a sad smile. Thank you. All of you. Still. <sighs> She clenches her fists. I can't let this go. I promise I'll get strong enough to be at Irene. I'll make this right. 
Armada quickly stands up. I won't let you take on that burden. I was right there when it happened, and I couldn't do anything. The responsibility falls on me. I'll defeat her. I notice Kana nod to herself, try to stand up, and then quickly sit back down. She then takes a deep breath and stands all the way, and stands up all the way. No, I... I'll stop her. When we were fighting her, my attacks barely did anything. I should have helped more, and I couldn't. I need to make up for it. I'll... I'll definitely beat her. Kana, there's, need, there's no need for you to blame yourself for that. The same goes for you, Harna, a student committee chairwoman. Um... Since the school is closed, I don't think that title works anymore. Nice counter, Kana. Hmm. This is getting out of hand. Things begin to devolve into a very strange argument from that point. The three of them stubbornly refuse to let anyone else take the blame. It's heartwarming in a way, but leans more towards being ridiculous. Just when they seem to be tiring each other out, I raise my hand. Uh, this might sound dumb, but why do why do only one of you need to fight her? Huh? Hmm? Eh? I mean, wouldn't it be great if we had three witches strong enough to corner her? It's not exactly fair, but she's practically a monster, so fair goes out the window, right? If the three of you worked hard together... You'll be unstoppable. Ah, that's a great idea, Austin. Haruna awkwardly sits back down. You make a good point. I may have gotten slightly heated up. My chuckles. Only slightly. You are the same, Mai. Mai simply pretends not to hear. Thanks for wrapping everything up, Austin. It's nothing. You guys would have seen it under normal circumstances. She looks at the other two. So, is that our goal? Connor nods. We have to become stronger. Strong enough to punch Irene right in the face. As always, you scare you when you're mad, but... But I agree. The next time we see her, things won't go the same way. I smile as they nod. After facing Irene, they were all carrying too much guilt. At least now, there's some ambition in them. Haruna and Connor are the first ones to leave after the meeting. They seem to have their own ideas of how they'll be getting stronger. When it's just m me and Mai, I get up to leave. I'll be heading out now. Before that, what do you plan to do now? Huh? Huh. Well... I think for a minute. I think I'll take a nap. That's my immediate plan anyway. I doubt what she means, though. I doubt that's what she means, though. Should I answer seriously or go with the nap? I seriously think about my plans. Now that the school is closed, the barrier's down. This is the best time for me to finally leave. I guess I'll head home. My nods. That is the sensible thing. Do you plan to keep dealing with magic? <sighs> the question throws me. Obviously, I plan to give Maya and everyone else as much support as I can. Still. Aside from moral support, I don't really see how it could help. Things in the magical world are getting intense, but... I shrug. I'm not really sure where I fit in all of this. That's my answer at this point. Hmm. My stares at the table and nervously rings her fingers. What about beside me? What? I mean, while I'm training, it would be nice to have someone I can count on. Preferably someone dear to me. And of course, I already missed something. Oh yeah, and classic Tyf backlog. A, uh, partner, I suppose. I'd really like if that could be you. 
Suddenly, I feel a heavy weight on my chest. I understand the implications of what she's asking me. I can't take this lightly. My, I, my suddenly stands up and faces me with a smile. <sighs> right, let's stop there. Huh? I don't expect an answer right now. Even I still need to get my thoughts in order. She walks over to the door. Think hard on it, Austin. Good luck. My leaves with a wink. <laughs> PSR. My leaves with a wink. The moment she's gone, I deflate with a sigh. Wait, why did I not get rid of that? Okay, sorry guys. Somehow I'm more stressed than when we fought Irene. I'm wallowing in my thoughts when something she said begins to bother me. Good luck. What does that mean? No matter how much I think about it, I can't figure it out. She might, have, might as well head to the dorms then and get up and leave the committee room. I'm lost in thought in the hallways when Haruna appears in front of me. Austin. Y yeah? Uh, that is... Do you have time to talk? Her eyes seem determined to look everywhere but at me. Did something happen? Sure. What's up? Can we talk in the classroom? Hmm? A suspicion starts to form in my mind. I nod hesitantly. Sure. We, ro we relocate to our classroom. It feels different with no one in here. Harna stiffly moves over into a desk by the window, and I follow. So, what's going on? She doesn't answer right away. <sighs> Taking a deep breath, she faces the window. That only makes me more nervous. Something big is coming. Have you met with Mai yet? Huh? Uh, yeah. We chatted for a bit. Harnan nods as if she expected that answer. I'm, st I'm still confused, though. Why didn't Mai's name come up here? Finally, Haruna faces me. Awesome. I don't really have many people I was close to as a child. Right. Until recently, Mai was the only person I considered special. She chuckles at herself. I used to think that... I used to think that was all the friendship I needed. Then Kana came along and wore me down. I laugh. She does have a way of growing on you. And then you showed up. I braced myself for some snarky banner, but it doesn't come. A light blush colors her cheeks, and she looks out the window again. I figured you'd just be another person helping my out. At most, we might become friends. That's how I saw this relationship going. But... But... She covers her face with her hands and mumbles. You went and became important to me. My heart rate drastically increases. What is this cute creature? That's... Uh... Sorry. It's fine. I've come to terms with it. That's why it'll be a problem for me if you were to disappear now. So, before that happens... Her voice trails off. I don't dare push her to finish. She closes her eyes. <sighs> when she opens them again, there's a stealer resolve there. Basically, I was tapping the bottom of the screen and nothing was happening. And for some reason, it registered that I pressed the home button multiple times, despite the fact that my finger is like an inch away. Which... Everyone's going off on their own to get stronger, and, and I think I'd grow better if you... No, that's an excuse. She steps closer to me. I would honestly just like it if you came with me. If you were by my side, that would be great. That's all. A thousand different thoughts flow into my head. Right after my... I can't handle this. Obviously, I can't run away, though. 
I shake off any cowardly thoughts. Um, Haruna, I... Haruna quickly waves her hands in front of me. Stop, stop. You don't... You don't have to answer now. <sighs> she takes a few steps away from me. This was just an offer. I just... I just wanted you to know. That's all. She forces a laugh while desperately avoiding my eyes. S so, just think it through. Until then, we can be normal, right? She thrusts her hand out for me to shake. This is normal? I hesitantly shake her hand. After her urgent handshake, she spins on her heel and marches towards the door. She bumps into a few tables on the way, but I don't point it out. I expect her to dash away, but her pride won't let her. She's amazing. I'm tempted to tell her she did a good job, but maybe I shouldn't. No, this is awkward enough. The kind of thing to do here is let her leave in peace. She briskly marches out of the room. Just before she disappears entirely, she glances back to see if I'm still watching her. Our eyes meet and she marches away just a bit faster. Normal, okay? She heals me without looking back. Yeah, that's impossible. Okay, what the fuck happened to my pillows? Sorry guys, I'm rearranging some of the stuff. Okay. Pillows back to where they are. Blankets back to where they are. Knock. Yeah, that's impossible. I wait a few minutes before I decide to leave the room. The last thing I want to do is bump into Haruna on the way outside. When I'm sure I've reduced the odds of that happening, I move into the hallway. The entire walk back to the dorms is agonizing. Two confessions. Whenever I realistically try to process this fact, my thoughts grind to a halt. I think I've used up my entire lifetime's worth of good luck. When the dorm comes into view, my heart sinks. With her broom in hand, Kana stands by the doors. Even from here, I can tell she's anxious about something it can't be. For the, th for the three of them to be waiting for me one after the other, there's no way this is just a harmless coincidence. A certain possibility creeps into my mind, but I reject it. It's just too unlikely. Kana soon sp spots me and waves me over. I wave back. As I approach, I'm tempted to check if my suspicion is true. On the other hand, it might be smarter to pretend I don't know anything. What should I do? Pretend I don't know anything. I approach Kana with a neutral expression and pretend to look surprised. Kana, what are you doing here? Yep, I'm better off this way. Some people just aren't meant to lie, huh? Uh, okay, seeing if I missed anything, why does the backlog take so long to load? Austin, what a coincidence. Some people just aren't meant to lie, huh? Yeah, okay, so I did miss a line that Kana said, but I just started in the backlog, so. After calming herself down, Kana nods and faces me. I'm not surprised by what she says. Do you mind if we take a walk? I can't refuse. Even knowing how this will go, I can't bring myself to turn her down. I brace myself and nod. I'll see this through. Kana beams at me, and I know I've made the right decision. We walk towards the library. Kana fidgets with her broom the entire way. Um, I just wanted to say thanks, Austin. Thanks? What for? She shyly scratches her cheek. For courage, I guess. Courage to talk to my courage to do what interests me. Ah, uh, I can't really take credit for that. You did a lot of the work on you did a lot of the work on that by yourself. Connor nods slightly and smiles at me. You're right, but you gave me the courage to change myself. That's really all I needed. A little push. She spins around in front of me, arms behind her back. You started that process. 
that little bit of courage went a long way. So, I want to use that courage to take another big step. She takes a step away from me. That innocent smile makes my heart thump wildly in my ears. Austin, I really like you. A lot. That's why she takes another step away. I'd like it if you could stay by my side. She's grown a lot. Being this direct wouldn't have been possible for her when we met. It's just... Um... Why are you backing away? Kana's face stiffens. She takes a few more steps backwards and then straddles her broom. I thought I could bear it, but I can't. You don't have to answer right now. Think about it. Wait. Before I can say anything more, she shoots off into the sky. For a good five minutes, I stand there staring at her, staring after her. Ha. Huh. Ha <laughs> ha. This is madness. I clutch my head and groan. The three of them are amazing. Honestly, I'm so happy I could die right now with no regrets, but... Just who am I supposed to choose? I spend a bit more time... I spend a bit more time by the library. Like Haruna, I don't think Kana can handle bumping into me again right now. When I'm sure I've given her enough time, I return to my dorm room. Lying on my bed, I let the events of the day wash over me. They like me, huh? The thought still baffles me, but the facts are there. No point avoiding reality. Along with my thoughts, I eventually realize the answer isn't so complicated. If I'm honest, they're all important to me, but there's definitely one person I'd consider special. Kana's smile crosses my mind and warms my heart. I cover my burning face with my hands. Of course it's her. I set up. If I don't act now, I'll chicken out. Before I lose my resolve, let's move. I march out of my room, feeling braver than I actually am. And during the strange looks from other from the other girls, I make my way to Kana's room. Okay, be cool. I knock and wait, and wait. There's no way she didn't hear me, right? I knock again just to be sure, but there's still no response. If she's not here, thinking about Kana's interests, there's only a few other places she might be. Library's about to close at this time, so... <sighs> Another place comes to mind. Alright, let's try there. I quickly leave the dorm and run towards the sports field. Sure enough, I spot a figure cutting through the air on a broom. Figured. I stay out of sight until Kana lands to catch her breath. She doesn't, she doesn't notice me right up until I'm behind her. Kana? With a shriek, Kana throws the broom in her hand up and whirls around. Seeing a golden chance, I reach out and I reach out and catch the broom. Austin, don't sneak up on me like that. Sorry, I'm just too stealthy. That's not something to brag about. What are you even doing here? Uh, um, I'm here to give you my answer. Somehow, this sounds really weird. About what we talked about earlier. Connor's face immediately turns crimson. She frantically looks around until her eyes rest on the broom in my hand. You were about to escape, weren't you? I, I wasn't. I hold out her broom. She tries to snatch it, but I avoid her. Kana. I can't help it. This is embarrassing. She covers her face with her hands and groans. My heart flutters at the sight of her. Jeez, I have really fallen this hard if I find even this cute. That's why my next words are important. Kana? It, yes? I love you. She stares at me for so long I think she might not have heard me. Uh, Kana? I said. I, I heard. I heard you. I just... She pinches her cheek. It's real. This is really happening. Is it really that surprising? It is. I mean... I mean... Tears well up in the corner of her eyes. I run away easily 
I don't have a lot of confidence. I get too curious. Even though I'm like this, can you still say you love me? I drop the broom and lightly wipe away the tears running down her cheeks. Of course. Actually, those little flaws are probably why I love you. She covers my hand with her own. Despite being afraid, despite having your problems, you keep moving forward. How can I not fall in love with that? Do, do you mean that? There are no words I can use. Easy words that might easy words that might ease her worries for a little bit, but that isn't good enough. I tilt her chin up slightly, her teary eyes meeting mine. There's a brief anxiety filled anxiety filled silence. Then the rest of the world falls away as I kiss her. I'm not sure how long it lasts. My head is far too full of her to keep track. Eventually, though, we manage to pull away. I'll say it again. I love you, Connor. This time, it seems to get through to her. She nods slightly. Then she nods again with more conviction. I, I love you too. We lean into each other. The moment I think we're heading towards another kiss, a spot movement from behind Connor. Hmm? Is someone still in the building? Connor turns around and follows my gaze. Did you see something? Yeah, I thought I saw someone inside. Who would? I suddenly remember what time it is. Connor. The guard should be patrolling around now, right? Eh? Eh? One of the windows open. One of the windows is open and a guard sticks his hat out. You two, stay where you are. You're not supposed to be here. Understood. We'll leave. I said stay. Without hesitation, I take Connor's hand and run. Or we purposefully take strange routes trying to lose him. Along the way, I realize Connor's laughing. I grin back at her. Having fun? Of course. I should be scared, but... She grips my hand tighter. I just can't help but be happy right now. Oh. I felt for even more. I keep that thought to myself as we hide behind a corner. I think we lost him. Hey, Austin? Yeah? At some point, I might get shy and run away again. Nope, that won't happen. How can you be so sure? I give her hand a squeeze. I'll give you plenty of courage so that doesn't happen. Enough that even Irene looks harmless. Connor studies me and then bursts into laughter. Hey, I'm... I'm cut off as she steals a kiss. As I'm left blinking blankly, her grin widens. What was that for? Nothing. Nothing at all. I was just filling up on some courage. <laughs> the end. Anyways, guys, this was episode 15 of Spell and School Girls. The Connor route. I, or Connor ending. I hope you guys enjoyed. This has been Teflers in 77, and I'm out of house. Bye.